I am Dr. Rajiv Muni, vitreoretinal retinal surgeon from St. Michael's Hospital, University of Toronto. I am going to give you a brief overview of pneumatic retinopexy from the patient's perspective. The retina lines the inside of the eye and is responsible for sending visual messages through the optic nerve to the brain. When you have a retinal detachment, the retina is lifted away from the back wall of the eye where it is normally connected to a layer of cells known as the retinal pigment epithelium. The retinal pigment epithelium is important for the nutrition of the retina, and so the retina will lose its ability to function properly if it remains detached for too long. The most common type of retinal detachment is referred to as erygmatous retinal detachment. It occurs when a tear develops in the retina, usually due to an abnormal area of adhesion and traction between the vitreous inside the eye and the retina. Common risk factors for retinal tearing are age, being nearsighted, previous cataract surgery, and eye trauma, but sometimes it just happens without any associated risk factor. When there is a tear in the retina, fluid from inside the eye is able to seep through the retinal tear, thereby lifting the retina away from the retinal pigment epithelium. This fluid that accumulates behind the retina prevents the retina from reattaching. One way of treating a retinal detachment that is commonly used today is called pneumatic retinopexy. There are also other alternatives such as scleral buccal, pars plana vitrectomy, or a combination of vitrectomy and scleral buccal. Pneumatic retinopexy can be done in an office setting rather than in a hospital and it usually takes approximately 20 minutes to be performed. During a pneumatic retinopexy, a gas bubble is injected into the center of the eye. The gas bubble presses against and seals the retinal tear, preventing additional fluid from entering through the tear. This allows the retinal pigment epithelium to naturally pump fluid out from behind the retina. Here's what to expect. First, a local anesthetic will be given and the eye surface will be sterilized with eye drops. Next, the doctor will use a painless needle to remove fluid from the front of the eye. Removing this fluid is important as it will create space for the gas bubble that will subsequently be placed in the eye. One large gas bubble is then injected into the eye. While the gas is injected, it is not painful, however you may feel a pressure sensation. Immediately afterwards, your doctor will examine your eye to ensure that the gas bubble is in the right place and to evaluate the pressure in your eye. Sometimes additional fluid will need to be removed in order to lower the intraocular pressure. Once your doctor is happy with the pressure in your eye, you will be given a prescription for eye drops and you will be ready to go home. However, over the next seven to 10 days, you will be required to perform specific head positioning that will help repair the retinal detachment. For the first four to six hours after the procedure, including on your way home, you will need to maintain a face down head position. For this reason, you should arrange for someone to drive you to and from your appointment. After the face down position has been held for four to six hours, you will gradually lift your head in increments. First, the head is lifted one third of the way up. This position is maintained for one hour. Next, the head is lifted another one third of the way up for an additional hour. Finally, the head is lifted to the upright position. Strict adherence of each head posture is important as these postures help remove some of the fluid from behind the retina. Afterwards, you will be asked to maintain a certain head posture for seven to 10 days. Your doctor will let you know the head posture as it will depend on the specific location of your retinal tear. Your head is positioned so that the gas bubble floats towards the retinal tear. The gas bubble will seal the tear, preventing additional fluid from seeping through. Because the bubble is relatively small, the success of your procedure will rely on proper head positioning so that the gas bubble stays directly over the tear. Therefore, it is important that over the next 7-10 to 10 days, the majority of your time is spent in this head position, including while sleeping. Few minutes for breaks are allowed to eat, to go to the washroom, to take a shower. However, it is recommended that at least 23 out of 24 hours a day, you are in the appropriate head position. Once the retina is attached, your doctor will use a laser to permanently seal the tear. Depending on the nature and size of your retinal tear, your doctor may instead use a freezing technique to permanently seal the tear called cryopexy. 
The gas bubble will limit the vision in your eye, but eventually the bubble will naturally reabsorb and get smaller on its own until it disappears. You cannot fly in a plane while the gas bubble is in your eye. You must also avoid rapidly going to high altitudes. You will generally be able to return to normal activities approximately 12 days after injection of the bubble once the gas has been reabsorbed. As with other procedures to repair retinal detachments, pneumatic retinopexy has potential complications that include new retinal breaks, gas getting behind the retina or other places in the eye where it should not be, and infection. Careful follow-up with your doctor is important to manage any complications and ensure successful reattachment of the retina. If this procedure is unsuccessful, a second pneumatic retinopexy or another method to repair the retinal detachment such as scleral buckle or pars plana vitrectomy will be recommended. Research demonstrates that failure of pneumatic retinopexy followed by another procedure for repair of retinal detachment does not jeopardize the final long-term visual outcome. We also know from a recent study performed at St. Michael's Hospital called the PIVOT trial that patients who had pneumatic retinopexy compared to vitrectomy did better in terms of their visual acuity and in terms of distortion at one year. However, this applied to very specific cases that were very routine and straightforward. It is important to have a detailed discussion with your doctor to discuss which procedure is best for you.